West 605 is the home of patriots. Talking about people who not only believe in celebrating their country, but also believe in serving their country. So when we talk about this word patriotism, what do you think of? Maybe flying the flag, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance, or maybe just standing during the national anthem. But what else could this word patriotism mean? Patriotism means you want to defend this country that you love. You want to defend the democracy. Uh, you want to defend the freedoms that we enjoy, the freedoms of, of speech. My son and my grandkids, I think I've instilled in them, you know, my patriotism. So I think it's all about what is being taught to these younger, younger people. Being a patron isn't just waving the flag on Veterans Day or Memorial Day. It's recognizing any time you see a veteran, uh, taking the time to thank them for their service. Uh, we can turn right around there and look at this up here on the firefighters. I think it's patriotic to recognize firefighters. It's rec recognizing our First police responders. officers. Anybody, yeah. anybody that has anything to do with serving the public. Uh, if you see a veteran sitting someplace in a restaurant or on a bench and he's, he or she has a cap on, go up and thank them for their service. You don't realize how some of them really appreciate it. Yeah, how about supporting our military veterans and those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation? Was this your idea or where'd you get the idea? No, I got the idea from a golfing buddy's friend of mine uh, who was from Emporia, Kansas. And they started a program like this quite a number of years ago to honor veterans. And she suggested that I start one here. So I thought it was a good idea. And so we started with 18 World War II veterans the first year. And uh, this is our sixth year and we've got 300. 300? Most of them are World War II veterans because a lot of uh, families have called up and want to honor their father or their grandfather, but we have uh, veterans up all the way down to the present conflicts. Okay. Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan, the whole bit. So how do you decide who gets to be on a banner? How does, that, how does the process work? If you want to sponsor your dad, uh, you would uh, get in contact with us. I would send you an application and you would fill it out with the veteran's name. Uh, what branch of service he was in, uh, what division or outfit he was with, and then any information that you'd like to put on the banner, uh, we put up, and then we, we hang them up. And we, at, we're at the point now where because we have so many, we have to rotate them. Everybody would like to be downtown, but we just don't have the room. There's a new, enough room for 120 uh, downtown now. But we have them on Canyon Lake Drive, we have them out West Main all the way to Sturgis Road. We have them on the Memorial Walkway from City Hall over at the Civic Center. Uh, we have some on Quincy and some on uh, Kansas City Street. Okay. So. What's What's been the reaction from people? All who, positive. Yeah. All positive. What kind of comments are you hearing? Uh, just grateful for having them up. Uh, we have families that have come from out of state uh, to have their picture taken. Uh, we had one family that brought three step ladders because there were so many of them, so they were <laughs> layered up and uh, things like that. So we've never had a negative comment about them. Uh, okay. all, everybody's been positive. And we keep getting, I have 52 people on the waiting list for next year. I, again, let me go back 50 years <laughs> back there in the Vietnam conflict. Uh, when those soldiers who came home from that war, and many of them had some mental issues that they had to deal with because it was a horrible, horrible situation over there. Uh, they weren't welcomed. I think now our veterans are, are welcomed with open arms. And I think thanking a veteran, recognizing veteran, listening to their stories, I think that's a patriotic thing to do. Just going back to over the years of how many customers I've helped or assisted in finding a grave or speaking with the widow that uh, may come out here uh, day after day and, and hearing the stories that, that they tell about their, their loved one that's placed here and how proud they are that South Dakota has or that a national cemetery is located here in the beautiful Black Hills. And you know, you hear the stories and we have a lot of pride in what we do here at the cemetery. We're, we're maintained to national shrine standards and, 
and that, uh, you know, it, it gives them that sense of uh, knowing that their, uh, that their family, that their spouse or their veteran is being taken care of in such a, such a high manner. So let's take a closer look at how West 605 pays tribute to our veterans, beginning with the Black Hills National Cemetery in Sturgis. Well, Black Hills National Cemetery opened in 1948, uh, uh, 104 acres, um, and it has a small, uh, you know, the uh, average burials right now we do is about 750 to 800 burials a year, uh, which is improved. Uh, we, we bury, uh, or any honorably discharged veteran is able or is eligible to be buried in a national cemetery. Uh, we just, we sit on about 104 acres. We're one of 155 national cemeteries, state and tribal cemeteries. Uh, we just uh, now, a few years ago, gained another 180 acres just to the northwest. So there's plenty of room for expansion. So how many servicemen and women are buried here? We have right now, um, there's about 20, just over 23,000 markers out here. Uh, 23,000? <clears throat> yes, and wow. just over 32,000 uh, veterans, spouses, and eligible uh, children are buried. So we actually have 23,000 sites and over 32,000. Some are, some burial sites have multiple people, multiple in the, in the grave site. So you yourself are a veteran? Yes. So what does it mean for you uh, to be working here? And by the way, how long have you worked here? I've been here at the cemetery just over 22 years. Okay. And I, as I tell everyone that I meet, uh, this is the most honorable job uh, that I've ever been, uh, you know, that I've ever had in my over 40 year working career. Um, being what, do you, a, what do you mean by that term, honorable? Honorable meaning, you know, I, I've met the, uh, the veterans and the spouses that I meet. It's truly an honor what I get to do every day to assist in their uh, time of need. Um, and then to take care of, of uh, the grave sites at a National Shrine standard. Um, to learn the, to learn the, uh, or, or to hear the stories from the uh, the widows or the veterans that I've met over the years, and and it really helps me to uh, pass along to my grandkids of of uh, and my children of of the respect that we need to that all these veterans deserve and. The freedoms that we enjoy today are given to us um, by the uh, the uh, service that these men and women have have provided in, over the years. 750 to 800 burials every year. More than 23,000 grave sites. Think about that the next time you drive by on the interstate. And then there are those who take a different sort of approach when it comes to honoring our nation's veterans. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, stone monuments in town, but we really, this makes it a little more personal, I think, because you actually can see the person uh, and know a little bit about them rather than just maybe a name on a, on a plaque or, or just an overall uh, plaque saying something about World War II. This makes it a little more personal. Yeah, it's a, it's a different dynamic when you can see their face. Exactly. put a face with the name. Exactly. And some of these stories that these veterans have are outstanding. Uh, now, speaking of that, that's a nice little segue to the gentleman here on this banner. This, you have a personal connection to. Tell me about this. Okay, this 
is my uncle. Uh, he was my mother's uh, older brother uh, with the 101st Airborne and uh, landed on D-Day, uh, fought in Market Garden, was over at the Battle of the Bulge, and on Christmas morning, uh, just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, the Germans attacked there, and his alpha was instructed to let the tanks pass over them because we had tank destroyers in the woods, and so they did. And apparently, uh, when the German infantry came along, he was a squad leader, and the story goes that he got up out of his foxhole to check on his men and got shot. So he died Christmas morning and, and is buried in Luxembourg uh, Cemetery over there. Um, they had a choice uh, as to whether or not they wanted the bodies brought back or whether they wanted them left there. And according to what I understood from the family, they said they wanted him to be with his buddies. So they left him over there. Marcelo Lebeau, the next banner up the street, uh, was a combat nurse during World War II. She was born and raised here in, uh, in South Dakota, went to Indian school, uh, went and became a nurse and ended up uh, over on, I think she landed on Utah Beach about four days after D-Day and started tending wounded uh, in France and then in Belgium. And she tended to a lot of wounded in, uh, during the Battle of the Bulge. So she had some stories and she's become a, or she was, she'll be, she would have been 103 about four days ago if she'd lived. She lived to 102 and was active right up until the time she died. Uh, she's been honored by our government, by the French government, She's spoken uh, all over the country. She's quite an advocate for uh, Indian rights, especially Native American rights, to the point where she's been very active, or she was, in, in trying to have the, uh, all the Medal of Honor winners at the Wounded Knee Massacre uh, rescinded. So that was her big project, but uh, quite a lady right up until the time she died. You might remember a time when we didn't always welcome our veterans when they came back home, if they made it home at all. But Vietnam was not a threat to this country. So we weren't defending this country against Vietnam. It was that, somewhere over there. On the other side of the world. So in my opinion, you, you, you can't say that I'm against the war, the Vietnam War, or conflict, whatever you want to call it. I'm against it, therefore, the, if you're against the war, you're, you're, you're not patriotic. If you're for the war, then you are patriotic. You, you can't do that, because by my definition of patriotism, it doesn't apply to Vietnam, the uh, Vietnam War. Am I making sense? Yeah, I was, well, I was just gonna follow up on that by asking, there have been other conflicts since Vietnam where that have been over there. So I wanna, I wanna probe a little bit on this. So did I hear you correctly in saying that you can still be patriotic, you can still be a patriot and question exactly. that war over there? Exactly, that's what this there. country is. I mean, you're allowed to do that in this country and that's why we fight for this country because you're allowed to, to say your piece without fear of being thrown in jail. Uh, again, I'm gonna go back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy ran for the President of the United States and one of his main platforms was to get out of Vietnam. And you can't say, you know, Robert Kennedy wasn't a patriot. Uh, a senator from South Dakota, George McGovern. George McGovern ran for the presidency in 72 against the war. And you can't say George McGovern is not patriotic. He was an extremely patriotic individual. He, he fought in World War II. He, had, uh, he was a, uh, a B-24 bomber pilot. He had like 35 missions under his belt. He was against the war. As, as we work our way through history, get closer to our, uh, the current times, you know, we're still fighting conflicts or wars over in the Middle East. And you say, if you don't, you know, if you're against that war, are you, are you not patriotic? And I say, you, that's a different conflict. That's a different war than Vietnam, because this one started with 9-11. We were actually attacked in 9-11 by countries in the Middle East now, whether it's Iraq or Afghanistan, I mean, I don't know, but I mean, we were attacked, so we had reasons to, to go to war with those folks. And if you were against that war, even though you, you still have the right of saying 
you know, I'm against it, but I think it's a different measuring stick compared to uh, Vietnam. So we've been talking a lot about patriotism. We've been talking about veterans and how our nation's veterans are honored. But you know what, I, I, think, I think we're missing something, something that's just huge, maybe monumental. We see up and down the avenue flags right here between 2.5 and 2.7 million people in, a, in any given year. And you interact with most of them. I see a lot of them. Okay. You know? And, and obviously, from what I've seen, they, you because you're in the uniform, the hat, they beeline it to you with questions they have. Yeah, the hat draws people. <laughs> okay. No. What, what's the most, uh, what's the question they ask or have or statement that they have most often? Often we hear uh, people thought it would be bigger. Um, that's <laughs> like one of the unique, and they, they, they lean into you and kind of say, I thought it'd be bigger. <laughs> um, Sometimes they act like that, and that's cool. That's just and how fun. do you respond it's, to it's that? It's a personal thing, you know. Okay. If they they feel like they're presenting something, maybe that you haven't heard before, uh -huh. they're kind of worried about your reaction. So okay. they kind of you know lower their voice just a little bit. It's pretty fun actually. And how do you respond? I said, yeah, we hear that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So people arrive here with expectations and sometimes we don't meet those expectations unfortunately but okay. the sculpture is not going to grow right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so we not only or you not only get visitors here from all over the country they come from all over the world absolutely yep We're, this is an international tourist destination okay and i'm, I'm just curious i'm uh tell me why someone from another country would want to come here to this really you know quasi you know this American shrine, so sure. to speak. Well, the, the Declaration of Independence was used all over the world for human rights. Uh, it's, a, it's a baseline of human rights, is the Declaration of Independence. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Thomas Jefferson. Mm -hmm. So coming to a location where they can connect to who Jefferson was as a human being, like Monticello, like uh, here at Mount Rushmore and other locations, University of Virginia and so on, um, they can connect to the foundation of what it means to be a human, right? Okay. With all of these rights enabled to us, given to us, right out, right out of the gate. All right. Um, also, this is a this is Americana, so people wanting to experience what it's like to be an American come to our yeah. American icons. Yeah, yeah. So when you talk to people, or when they come up to talk to you, and they express. Um, some sort of question or statement regarding patriotism. What do they normally say? What's typical? Uh, they talk about, um, they, they begin to dive into who these guys are and, and, and their lives and who, what kind of patriot they were during their lifespan, during their lifetime. Talking about the presidents. The, up the there. four presidents, okay. yeah. Okay. That's one of the things we often talk about who they were as, as humans, as people. Okay. Um, also talk about the, the time frames involved and the endeavor it took to create that thing. Um, so the carving process starts in 1927, finishes in 1941. And this is all part of the American story. And it reinforces your patriotism that human beings were able to take a ridge line and transform it into this. Yeah. So that's, that's all the human story about um, taking on a challenge and accomplishing it. Mount Rushmore over, you know, the, the viewing, the sculpture, um, you know, uh, there, this was a uh, ridge line that was natural. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the day, uh, before it was named Mount Rushmore in the, 18, uh, in the 1880s, it was named uh, by the Lakota people, it was named the Six Grandfathers. So Mount Rushmore, the name Mount Rushmore is only since 1885. Okay. Um, so predating that, it's the Six Grandfathers named by the Lakota people. So up there, when people arrive, they, they take in the full experience and, and learn in the patriotism that exists with them just arriving. It's a, it's a destination place. It's a, it's a bucket list place um, because of their learning from elementary school. About two of the four presidents anyway is, are involved in, in, in common you know, national history um, that they learn young. So it becomes 
a history lesson. It becomes a, uh, an American destination place for people from, you know, from around the country. I, I have to assume, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you talk to these people on a daily, uh, a daily sort of basis like you do, I would assume that they're the way they're impacted by coming here and their sense of patriotism, it's got to rub off on you somehow. Well, sure, yeah, every time I talk to them. When, if I'm having, you know, I know it's hard to believe that park rangers have bad days, but sometimes we do. Um, when I'm having a bad day, whether I'm stuck in the office working on paperwork or something, all I have to do is come out here and talk to the visitors here that exist here every day. I talk to them interact with them, and I am instantly gratified by their experiences. Just talking to them gives me that energy, that personal fulfillment that, I, that we all need. Mm -hmm. Personal fulfillment is something that everybody wants in their life, and I get mine by talking to them. It was like six years ago, I'm walking up the Avenue of Flags, and I see a, an older gentleman sitting on a bench, and I could tell that he's relatively sad. So I, I literally just walk over and sit right out next to him. And he tells me a story about a road trip that he and his wife had planned that his son was gonna lead and take them across to America, you know, get the experience of America. Uh, unfortunately, in that planning process, his wife passed on. And his son and he decided to do the trip anyway. So I sat down next to him and he told me the story. Um, his name was Vlad Stemscrew. I sat you right you remember it after yeah. all these years. I stuck his phone. I stuck his phone number in my phone, and I called him about once a year um, for the next five or so years until he didn't answer anymore. A quick reminder that all veterans are welcome to attend the summertime light show closing ceremony, and remember to thank a veteran for their service to our country, because that's how we do patriotism here in West 605.